All right, so uh, I think we all know that court is a pretty serious thing. For the most part, you want a lawyer that's going to take your case very seriously. Someone that's like going to, I don't know, whether you're suing because of an injury, suing because of wrongful unemployment, you're, you're facing a charge. You just don't want your lawyer to be goofing off. But <laughs> this next story is just so bizarre. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. You just got to listen. Prosecutor defeats Chewbacca defense in an actual federal court case. So the Chewbacca defense is like this meme from South Park way back in the day, and I guess someone actually used it in a federal courtroom, so somebody got to just like beat the crap out of it because duh. Could you imagine being the guy who's like being represented by the lawyer that gets up and starts trying to talk about Chewbacca in the middle of a federal courtroom? Do you just look back at your family and go like, I'm going away for a long time? In a case of real life, not quite imitating art, a prosecutor who compared a defense attorney's closing statements to the Chewbacca defense was able to win at trial. Although the prosecutor made an improper remark by invoking the defense from South Park, a federal ap appellate? Court ruled last week that he otherwise did not engage in prosecutorial misconduct. This case also appears to be the first time in a federal court decision has alluded to the Chewbacca defense. Now synonymous with making absurd non sequiturs, the Chewbacca defense dates back to the 1998 episode of South Park Chef Aid, where a parody of legendary lawyer Johnny Cochran defends his clients by talking about how Chewbacca, an eight foot tall Wookiee that lives on the planet Endor, even though he does not, and he continues to admit that what he's saying doesn't make sense, but he's still able to win over the jury twice. All right, I'm at least glad it wasn't like a literal Chewbacca defense, you know? It was uh, basically a non sequitur argument. All right, a non sequitur argument is a heck of a lot better than someone getting up in front of a federal courthouse where someone's facing felony charges and being like, this is Chewbacca, an eight foot tall Wookiee. I don't know, it seems like the play is to get up in front of the jury, start talking about something that makes no sense, and then be like, because this doesn't make sense, none of this makes sense. And even if that's not really how it works, like if the two things can coexist and one can make no sense and the other can still make sense, the goal is to confuse the jury into being like, yeah, you're right, none of this does make any sense. Because sometimes in the court of law, it's not about being 100% obviously not guilty. It's about reasonable doubt. You know, that's the entire judicial system, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So if you can establish reasonable doubt by making things not make any sense, I'm doing air quotes, then there is a possibility that, like, you might get away with what you're being charged of. And especially in situations where your client maybe has, like, red paint all over their hands, it's, it's just very evident that what they're being accused of probably happened. Sometimes it's probably, like, your only argument, you know? If they have videotape of the guy walking into the store and robbing it without a mask on, no gloves, 15 fingerprints, 18 witnesses, and he has no alibi, yeah, you just kind of got to start using stupid arguments that might possibly work, because what are you going to do? Try to convince them that it's not the guy in the video? But outside of South Park, the defense is not quite as successful. Unlike Chewbacca, the case that led to last week's ruling didn't begin on the planet Kashyyyk, but in Jacksonville, Florida, where this man, who owned and operated a tax preparer business, was indicted on federal tax fraud charges. So, they were in a federal court case for felony tax fraud charges, and a guy got up and said, Have you guys ever seen South Park? There's this one dude who does this thing called the Chewbacca defense, and now it's just permanently on the record. I'm not sure what the rules are for transcripts in a federal courthouse, but if they're, like, stored somewhere for historical preservation, it's gonna be hilarious in 200 years when all the historians are going back over things and they don't really know what's what from where, and they get super hung up on this Chewbacca defense. They're like, ugh, what, what is this Chewbacca defense? So they start investigating Chewbacca. They see Chewbacca, an eight-foot-tall Wookiee. Let, let's say by then, I don't know, we've evolved past movies. Now we're just so VR that people are removed from it. They think that we had Bigfoot as a president. I'm telling you, it's, it's a feasibility. Let's be realistic here. Now it's in the history books. The Chewbacca defense has been said in a federal courtroom. You can't take it back out of the transcript. During closing arguments, Moyes' defense team brought up the fact that the IRS agents who investigated him were told to revise their initial calculations about his income and expenses, and his attorneys then argued that because the IRS agents' work was so bad, their testimony and their revised calculations couldn't be trusted. 
In his rebuttal, Assistant U.S. Attorney Arnold Korsmeyer. Dude, I'm not doing good with the names today. Usually I'm pretty on top of it, but oh man, sorry. So the IRS agent's initial calculations had nothing to do with this case, and instead he argued that the defense was throwing out a red herring reminiscent of the Chewbacca defense from South Park. I'm not saying that federal agencies always have the best math and always have the best accounting. Probably not. Like, it's just the reality of the situation. I'm sure they make mistakes. But I feel like getting up in a federal courtroom run by the federal government and telling them that the federal agency is so stupid that you can't trust their initial calculations or their new calculations so everything has to get thrown out is definitely a ballsy play. You know, if it would have worked, cool, but I just feel like it's pretty obvious that that wasn't going to work out very well. I'm not a lawyer, though. I'm not a legal expert. What did you think the judge was going to do? Oh, yeah, you're right. Forget it. We, we know you probably owe all these back taxes, but because the IRS did a bad job before they did a good job, we're just going to get rid of everything? I don't think that's how it works, dude. If that was the case, I think everyone would be out here committing massive tax fraud and then getting in there and being like, Officer, <laughs> Judge, Your Honor, you can't charge me with this because you guys are bad at math and that puts the blame on you. Ha ha ha, no takesy-backsies, take the L. And I don't want to seem flip, but some of you may have seen it. I think it's a South Park episode, and there's a character who plays kind of a shyster attorney. And there's a scene where he's giving his closing, and he puts up a picture of a Wookiee from Star Wars, and he says, that's a Wookiee. What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. That doesn't make any sense, and this case doesn't make any sense. And then usually what happens is the jury just spontaneously gets up and starts clapping. And they're like, oh my goodness, wow, wowee, you, you sir, are the lawyer that I want at my trial. Thank you for your incredible defense. Thank you for your commitment. Nay, thank you for going above and beyond in your commitment to learning the law to be able to use Star Wars in the courtroom. Moyes appealed and accused the government of prosecutorial misconduct, arguing that the prosecutor's shyster comment deprived him of a fair trial, alleging that it poisoned the mind of the jury and likely confirmed for some their prejudices against defense attorneys. The 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously disagreed, although the court conceded that the prosecutor made an improper remark. The court saw nothing in the record to suggest that Moyes was prejudiced by the shyster comment. It was a single, isolated remark in an eight-day trial, and we cannot say it permeated the entire trial, nor did the comment have a prejudicial effect on Moise's substantial rights. So that's a whole lot of legalese for like, dude, come on, you can't really blame the fact that he brought up the Chewbacca defense on why you lost your case when your attorneys were trying to use the argument that the IRS is too stupid, so we just can't use any of their calculations and gotta let it go. Definitely probably not a good idea to be referencing South Park if you're an attorney, you know? Like, I'm just saying, yes, it's kind of funny. However, what if in this situation that's the reason that, like, someone you just prosecuted and got a conviction on gets to walk free? Could you imagine they would have been like, well, he has a point. You called him a shyster. We gotta let him out. And then he's just roaming around because you had to make a reference to South Park while giving your speech. I feel like referencing TV shows is probably just not something to do in a federal courtroom. I don't know, I just thought this story was nuts, so I wanted to share it with y'all.